Hey Rabbits, it's Trixie and today I want to tell you about my life with synesthesia. No worries, it only sounds like a disease. It's actually something pretty amazing. In today's video, I'm gonna tell you what synesthesia is, what it feels like and what funny moments it caused me so far. Just in case you wonder, yes, I already made a video about this topic at some point, but that was almost three years ago and I bet that most of you didn't see it, which is a pity because synesthesia is such a fascinating topic, so I figured it would be worth another approach. So first of all, in general, synesthesia is a neurological phenomenon. There are many different kinds, but I'm only going to tell you about the ones that I'm experiencing, which is that you connect objects like names, weekdays, numbers, or letters of the alphabet with a certain sense, be it a sound, a smell, a color, a taste, or a certain kind of feeling. It derives from the Greek word syn, together, and eisthesis, perception. So it describes a fusion of different perceptions that are not commonly meant to be joined in your head. To give you an example, some people with synesthesia may smell apple when they read the number two, which I guess we can all agree is weird. I mean, if number two would have a smell, it would most likely be sh The condition that I have is the most common one, but given that only 4% of people have synesthesia, makes me feel a bit special anyway. What happens to me is that I see letters and numbers in a specific color, and this color code has been consistent for all my life. The first time I noticed my, let's call it, skill, because that sounds cool, is when I was playing with my aunt. We were drawing and writing down simple words, so I must have been around six years old. Bored by the writing game, I remember that I said to my aunt, but Aunt Ute, why don't we write the letters in the colors they have? And of course my aunt was like, eh? Letters don't have colors by themselves? You can just choose any color you want, sweetie. Of course, I did not understand that and I tried to give her an example. But for example, the E is yellow and the B is light blue, aren't they? Let's just write them down in these colors. Needless to say that my aunt still didn't know what I meant. I don't know what we ended up doing, but I remember this moment as the incident I learned that I was different. What this story tells me is that I didn't make up having synesthesia. You know, I didn't read about it and decided, oh, I want to have that skill, sounds cool, people are going to be impressed. Of course, everyone could go ahead and distribute a color to a number and then learn that system by heart. But apart from this being a pretty pointless thing to do, it wouldn't be the same. And it's definitely not what I did. I had this inside of me and then learned the name for it, not the other way around. But let me tell you a bit more what this looks like in my head. Let's begin with the numbers. It's not like I see a different color from all numbers from 0 to eternity. It only affects single digit numbers, the ones from 0 to 9. For instance, the 7 is orange and the 2 is blue. So I see the 72 like this, first orange and then blue. The two colors don't mix together, they just appear next to each other. They're just combinations, set together like puzzle pieces. Here's a list of all the numbers and the colors I see them in. I always wondered why 0 and 1 are white. Maybe it's related to all the numbers that are a power of 10 consist out of 1 and 0, so they're the beginning of something new, they're something special, so they shouldn't have a special color as well other than plain white. Ask my brain, I really don't know. If you look at this color code, maybe you can sense a pattern here. If so, please let me know. Something else that I find worth mentioning is that I see both numbers and letters in front of a dark blue velvety background. Also, when I count, I see the numbers 0 to 19 passing by sideways from left to right. However, there is a slight upwards trend from 10 on. And from then on, whenever I reach a new 10, like 20 or 30, I climb up. It's really difficult to describe. The numbers follow a specific route, a specific pattern that I cannot even grasp myself completely. When I keep counting, the numbers below don't disappear. They are just blurred out, but I can still kind of see them in my head. Funnily enough, when I reach 100, the numbers below are deleted and the game starts all over again. I'm back to the bottom. Apart from that, sometimes the blue of the background color changes a bit in tone whenever I reach a new 10. Number 4 is yellow, so all the numbers from 40 to 49 are at least half yellow too. So the background becomes a bit greenish, like, you know, the color of the number 4 mixed with the usual blue. All of this is just so strange. It definitely makes counting and mathematical operations easier, because you always get the extra color information. You know, it's not only 50 minus 30 equals 20. It's also brown minus olive green equals something bluish. Furthermore, differentiating between even and uneven numbers is much simpler. While even numbers have very bright and shiny colors in my head, the colors of the uneven numbers seem a bit 
dirty. Another huge benefit is that it helps me remember birthdays and, for example, historical dates. When I studied for my A-levels, I just drew a box and wrote the events that happened in a certain year into it. And then I painted the background of the box and the colors that the numbers had that the year consisted of. Let's say I wanted to memorize when Lincoln was born. So I wrote down Lincoln's birth and painted white, blue, white, red, brown over the text. 1809. But let's talk about letters and their colors now. This is how I see the alphabet. Again, the same blue velvety background, but it's slightly darker. Also, when I list letter after letter, they move in a different way to the numbers. It's very weird. Since it's simply too difficult to describe, I drew it for you here. It seems so random, but it has been exactly like that forever. As if my brain was aware of connections that I cannot see. Apart from that, I always wondered why these colors? Why are some letters the same color? What's the connection between them? Why is there no purple or green? All of this is truly impressive. The number color thing is cool, but since I'm a hobby writer, I'm particularly grateful for the letters having colors. It literally makes writing feel like painting. However, the colors for the words work a bit differently. I only see the first letter's color when I read a word. All the others are white. Only in very rare cases, and I don't know when this happens, I also see the color of the second letter. But it's much fainter and it doesn't have so much weight as the first one. So let's take the word das Pferd, the horse, for example. Only the P would be light brown and all the other letters would be white or grayish, a bit blurred as well. And apart from this helping me paint my stories, it's also very useful in other contexts. It's much easier for me to remember lyrics of a song, poems, names, titles, items on my grocery list. It's like, oh no, I forgot my grocery list at home, but wait, there was something red on it, I remember. Shampoo! Also, I'm pretty convinced that synesthesia helped me big time to learn languages. The ton of vocabulary you have to learn, the different articles, grammar, sentence structure. Some colors here and there definitely help a lot. However, there are not only benefits from this, although I would say like 90% of synesthesia is awesome. Like, for example, the color that a name of a certain person has doesn't fit his or her face at all. For example, the name Anna is almost black in my head. So if I meet a person called Anna and she has blonde hair, that kind of messes with my head. It could be that it takes me longer to remember her name or I keep calling her by the wrong name. At least it feels kind of weird to me and I have to kind of ignore synesthesia when I talk about Anna. Secondly, from time to time, the color of a number doesn't get along so well with the color of a word that's connected to the same thing. Let's say a little boy with brown hair tells me that his name is Richard and that he is six years old. The name Richard, with the R being a very strong, nice brown, matches perfectly with the appearance of the boy. But the H, six, is yellow. So unless Richard is a Simpsons character and his skin is yellow, this doesn't make sense at all in my head. And then lastly, sometimes my color code doesn't match at all what I see. Die Sonne, the sun, should be yellow, right? But instead the S is red in my head. A red sun? So the color of the thing and the color of the letter in my head kind of fight against each other. And that can be pretty confusing and sometimes causes me headaches. Now I'm very curious about your thoughts on this topic. Do you have synesthesia as well, or do you know somebody having it? If you don't have it, would you like to have it, or does it seem more like a burden to you? The only thing I know is that people with synesthesia are claimed to be extra creative, which is something I really like to hear. Of course, I don't want to sound arrogant, but it does make me feel a bit special, and it gives me courage and motivation to create and design. Anyway, synesthesia or not, creating is always a good thing. So. Grab your pen, grab your pencil, or grab your paper and scissors and try something awesome today. All right, Bubbits, I really hope that you enjoyed today's video. If so, please give a thumbs up because that would make me really happy. Brown word. If you want, you can also follow me on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook, or subscribe to my second channel, Tricks Rabbit. My second channel contains a lot of creative stuff, blogs, and more personal things, so maybe that's something for you and you're gonna like it. Now, apart from that, here is a video that you should definitely check out as well. Subscribe to Don't Trust the Rabbit for more videos like this, and if you want to support my channel even more, you can also find me on Patreon. Your help would be so, so much appreciated. Now, I wish you all a wonderful, colorful day. Check out my other videos if you'd like to, and hopefully, we are gonna see each other in my next one. Bye!